All right, guys, welcome back to RTW's Wild History Ride. I'm Thomas. I'm Will. And I'm Rhonda. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about something very, 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 very weird. Spontaneous what? human combustion. Yeah, I was going to say, what is it? I was like, spontaneous. I, you can't deny, though, like, the picture I showed you was pretty cool. That was... That made it onto my top 10 disturbing list. But, like, it's not even... To me, it's not even, like, that disturbing. Like, I'm just like, it's just weird. I'm uh, like, oh, it's it's very weird. Okay, but not all of us have your background. I yeah, mean, most you, of us think it's pretty weird, and I'm I'm concerned about how we're going to get through this episode without it sounding like some... Morbid freak show? Uh, some forensic analysis, yes. Well, I think it's cool, though, because, like, I feel like we kind of go into... Because it's a historical account. There's it, yeah. multiple things, and we're just talking about the pseudoscience I'm, of it. I'm going to try and add some levity by talking about the show South Park a little bit, because oh. they do have an episode on it. So I always why add not? some levity. Shoot, yeah. it's easy to add levity. But this, this is something that's kind of dark. It's disturbed. Well, and the image you showed me was just plain weird. It to, to give context to what this image was, it was a woman who had spontaneously combusted, and the way the fire worked had completely eradicated her upper half. So it was the latter portion of a dress and two legs just there in the chair. You, you forgot and a lot, the, the important part, though. She had the, a high heel on. She, she did. She had high heels on. And the entire chair, back of the chair and the wall behind her was just ash. It was, But it's just, I think it's just interesting because I'm one of those people that, like, I... You sick freak? Well, no, humor, <laughs> yes. But, like, humor <laughs> is just the way I cope with things. Yes, And, like, I to work where I am, it's like you have to have humor. Oh, yeah. If I was in your shoes, I would be... Talk about dark humor. I would be there. I would have to. Because there's no other way you can survive. You're dealing with... The only people that are worse off than you, in my opinion, are either hospice nurses... Oh, yeah. Or coroners. And, That's And cool. police officers who have to... No, I'm talking about the ones that have to oh, yeah. identify no, yeah, children. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Though, those jobs would be the only ones I consider more messed up than yours. Well, not even messed up. Like, I don't even consider it that messed up. I consider it more like a hospice nurse that's rewarding. Cause, like, yes. You know. But, I mean, from a psychological toll Oh, standard, yeah, I can see that. I, I don't mean that. that it's a messed up job. I mean that the psychological toll that your mind is going to go through in your job is so extreme. Them... Uh, vets who have to put down puppies, yeah. things like that. Things that take a serious emotional and mental toll on you. I mean, it's not just the physical work of what you're doing. It's the, it's attacking everything at once. Well, you already knew too. And, and Rhonda, I think you were told about this too. Like whenever we went to go put my dog down Oh my God. for like, you know, he was just old, just old little Bama boy. And uh, oh, we went down. Your parents and were holding him and Will busts out with, go ahead. Oh, well. To me, everyone knows the Sarah McLachlan song, like in the oh arms God. of an angel. Yeah, and I he, was like, what better point than to play it for Bama? We literally sat down. Bama is in his mom's arms, and we'll start singing in the arms of the angels. And it got a laugh, and it did what exactly what it was supposed it to. It did. It was still it was still better than when you were trying to stand up after they gave him the first shot. I, I said, "Well, that gummy's dead weight now." I'm like, yeah, uh, he, was, he was still alive. Then. He was still was alive. Like, no, no. Oh my gosh, that is dark humor. <laughs> yeah. Well, he uh, the first shot was the one that kind of relax. It's the relaxing one. It doesn't put them down, but it relaxes the dog, so they're not in any pain. So if it's like a big dog, they'll have more energy and not be as bad off. But basically, Bama went straight to sleep and was snoring in will's arms and will did the smart move of sitting down on the ground indian style uh with his legs crossed and bama in his lap and they had to pick bama up and put him on the table so will's trying to maneuver with this dog that is just fully asleep just so gone to it doesn't care anymore it was it was it was an image that will forever be in my head. It was so like i i love but you know it was, granted like back to what we were talking about it's, yeah, it's more the, so of like I think when finding some kind of like when looking at things that are kind of hard to deal with, like a lot of people kind of do yeah. deal with humor. And, and you have to. And I understand that. I'm just I'm just calling out the fact that it is to a normal standard thought process that doesn't deal with what you guys deal with every day. This is morbid as heck. It is kind of morbid. But I will attribute this, by the way, because, you know, we always I always converse with uh, Ashley Flowers from, you know, Crime Junkie. 
that not we're like we're best friends or anything, but like I've emailed them a couple of times in order to get yeah, about our podcast. podcast. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, like, you know, uh, how do I do that? And they, they would converse, but she actually did a podcast on this. Oh really? And so I, I was like, it's called, it's on her supernatural with Ashley flowers. If you yeah. haven't checked that out, Got everyone it. needs to check that out. But uh, that's what it, we I gave me the idea, and I was like, I don't want to go through exactly what she talked about, but I think no, there are No, we don't aspects. want to be a rip-off. No, I think it, there are aspects, though. So if it does sound similar to hers, just know that it wasn't intentional. It's just kind of, you have to talk about some yeah, of the things. Yeah. So, um, so I will first declare on this, that like it, they declare it as a pseudoscience. Okay. So take anything with like a you map, just a, go ahead and get a whole salt shaker. Yeah, just like okay. well, not even and just like take everything with a grain of salt. Yes, I'm always under the fact that there's always another explanation for things. True, but I do love a good supernatural explanation. So you never know. I mean, you know, maybe one day we uh, find out that this was all possible. Um, so basically, what uh, this actually talks about spontaneous human combustion. It's the combustion of a living or recently deceased human body without an apparent external source of ignition. So there's not really, they don't think that there's not a lit cigarette near the body. There's not any gas or anything like that near the body. So it's, it's more so that they could not find an external source that could explain why a person just went up in flames or something like that. So this was what the, the definition was that I found. So, um... Oh, yeah. Can I ask a question? Of course. How far back does this go? So I looked at cases that were anywhere from the 18th through the 20th century. But there was the most recent case of it there where the coroner actually listed it as a spontaneous um, human combustion was in 2010. So that's that's the most recent. So you have that to look forward to when you go to sleep. Um, let's see. Oh, gosh. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay. So you could, be, you could just be sitting in your easy chair and then all of a sudden... Uh, let's see. Ju hopefully not. But so uh, the external so, so like I said, uh, the external sources of ignition. Some cases, when scientists have looked at them, like from I guess you know from years in the future, like when people have looked at these cases from back in the day, they have seen that maybe in order to have some kind of mysterious story for the time, that maybe some potential sources of ignition were overlooked deliberately for a story. So basically, like, oh, maybe like they were by an open fireplace, but we're not going to mention that because we want it to be that, oh, they just went up in flames for some kind of sensational story. So that's what, you know, they were saying. So just take everything with a grain of salt when you okay. kind of look at this. So, uh, so a lot of these sources were saying that it looked like as if the fire started from within the victim instead of externally which doesn't make any sense because the human body is kind of a sealed thing aside from the lungs and also we're like a, a general portion of water like you yeah. know you would think that it would be very very difficult to like kind of have some kind of ignition well see i would think that it would smother out i mean I, i'm sure they die but if there's an ignition inside the body you'd think that they they die and everything would be closed off before it could spread yeah. and burn anything else and that's what, yeah and that was one of the things i found too it was saying that a lot of um you know, uh, there were people who said that maybe the cell, because the cells of the human body, they're mostly water. So mm -hmm. it, it would be hard for the body to kind of catch flame because like they would think the water from the human body would be yeah. a, a potential like inhibitory type of thing that would well, prevent That's this. why we have uh, degrees of burn because it has to be a hot flame to get it higher and higher degrees of burns because we are so saturated with water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talking about degrees, how hot does a body have to get to burn? Well, the thing is, is that, and this is specifically from her podcast that I listened to this. Apparently you have to have, I don't, I forget. I'm assuming it's probably because for having people be cremated. Yes. I don't remember if it's degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. It was greater than like 2000. I yes. would assume degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. I would assume. I, like I believe you're right. For like a long period of time. Yeah. But, uh. Even then, I believe this teeth survive. Yeah, like the, the teeth and the bones, process, maybe yeah. some like the spine, you know, stuff like yeah, there's that. Yeah, part, there's parts of you that even with that amount of heat don't burn. So the fact that in the images that we've seen, the entire upper body's gone, that tells us that it was an extremely hot flame for a long enough period of time to burn this, mm -hmm. which means that that was some serious heat. Yes, which is so interesting because it's like, and when you see some of the pictures, like, just be, hey, a warning. Just if you ever look yes, up any you, of that, just be wary of that. Don't, how about don't look it up unless you're just 
really, really sure you want to see this. Well, if you're interested, like, look, I mean, it, it, it's disturbing. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. I was just pulling this up while we were talking. Oh, did you see oh, a picture? Oh my gosh. <gasps> okay. No, I'm not looking at pictures. I don't want to see pictures, but I did find some text here. This is from around 1800, and this guy Pierre Ami Lair published a study of some deaths that he had checked out. And this is, he had checked out 15 cases, and this is his list of criteria. Oh, yes. Oh, no. And I have to laugh. I'm, okay, I should not say I have to laugh. Uh, listen, about you this. have to. I, you, well, you have to. Let me just read some of this. Okay, all victims had made immoderate use of spiritus liquids. I love the spiritus liquors. Liquors. So they were liquors, liquors. They were heavy drinkers. It only happens to women. Oh, all I'm Okay, safe. no, no, no. Let me finish this. All are far advanced in age. Far advanced. Like, how far? Uh, well, okay, just like older. Retirement age, I think, is what okay. they said. Well, you know, this is 1800, so I'm not sure exactly what retirement age oh, would have true. been back then. The fires mostly confined their damage to the victims. The fires reduced bodies to ash. Yes. In most cases, some extremities were left behind unburned. Oh, my gosh. This does sound like a forensic episode. Yeah. It is. Water sometimes boosted the fire rather than extinguished Ooh, it. Oh, I actually didn't read that. Yes. Uh, this is terrible. Uh, all, <laughs> so it would be- happens only to women. Okay, I just see these ginned out, boozed up, older women. <laughs> these women with... Yeah. Oh my no gosh! I mean, so well, don't walk. You're, they're walking down the. St- I shouldn't laugh, but oh my! It's like how often does this happen? I know it. You know, I could kind of see it if it's um, if it's something like a grease fire, because when you throw water on a grease fire, it's not exactly a fun trip. Yeah, true. For those of you who've ever experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so if it's if it's the human fat that's burning. And water hits it, it's just going to spread that out. Yeah, well, and I'll kind of go into more that a little bit later, too, when they kind of go into why certain criteria, you know, maybe why certain things were not burned and stuff like that. So, but I will say, so this, uh, mostly, I I attribute this, like, I think in 1746, Paul Rowley, um, in an article in the Philosophical uh, Transaction, I think is what it was called, a lot of these documents are in Italian, so I couldn't read them. I tried to access, like, the actual document. But, yeah, I don't speak Italian. Yeah, I don't speak Italian. I wish I could, you know, tell you I did, but I, that would be a stone-faced lie I here. Could, I could try it with the Spanish, but I think that'd be an insult to both countries. I know, I we get so many emails about it. Yeah. But this was uh, focused on the mysterious death of Countess Cornelia uh, Zangheri Bondi, Bandi, whichever one that is. Um, but she was an Italian noblewoman at okay. the time. So how apparently... How big was she and how much did she drink? Well, so here's the thing. So I'll go in, into like what I kind of thought was... What it, like perceiving it from an outside perspective years later, maybe what happened, yeah. but we'll see. So she apparently during her la- her last, <laughs> they referred to it as a last supper. Um, oh my god! I, I think that's kind of funny. I was like, but bless her heart, rest in peace. Oh my um, god! She apparently became uh, dull and heavy, is what they kind of what? described. So what I attributed it to, like when I was thinking, I was like, well, maybe she was having a heart attack or something like that, or a stroke, or a stroke, or like well, maybe it, she was having some kind know, of thing like that. If she that. was dull and heavy, there are gases that are denser than oxygen. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some. Maybe the spontaneous combustion is due to some gas the body produced under certain conditions. That was heavier than oxygen, so when they pick her up, it had increased her weight. Well, I think I don't even think it's saying that she that she was dull and heavy. I oh, think it just that means lethargic. Her, you're saying that her consciousness was yeah. Getting, okay, like she's like, oh, I'm tired. You know, okay. like that kind of thing. Like, oh gosh, yeah. I'm tired. I, gotcha. I need to go to bed. Like she I was going down the wrong rabbit hole. A sense of malaise. Well, hey, that's a good one to maybe if we ever do a part two or anything. Okay. So um, apparently, though, like Rhonda said, with that criteria. Um, she actually, she was a brandy drinker, apparently, and she also liked to put what was called camphorated brandy on her body for pain relief. Oh, okay. okay. And so camphorated, I looked what that was. It's described as a waxy, flammable, <laughs> transparent oh, no. solid. So apparently, like, I, I don't know if it was just for her or for the oh, time, no. was some kind of medicine that she would have used on herself for pain. Mm. So maybe she uh, doused herself with it and went to bed. <laughs> so, um... She's, like I said, she was a brandy drinker. So apparently the maid went with her. She had a yeah. chambermaid, I guess, that went with her. Okay. And they went uh, to her to bed. And she was talking, though. Like, she was still talking. She uh, prayed. She was a very pious woman. And she would she prayed with her maid. And she talked with her for about mm, two to three hours before she went to bed. Okay. So the next day, the maid realized that she was not awake at her normal time. I think I think it said in... I think it might have been an Ashley Flowers podcast that she would get up at, like, 6 a.m. And then it was about 8 a.m. And she noticed noticed that she wasn't up. So uh, she went to check on her and then found out that she was on fire 
and like dead in like near her bed. And uh, so wait, wait, wait. She was near her bed. She was near her bed. So you're saying that at some point she got up before she caught fire. Yep. They said the uh, th- that it looked like she the covers were um, the covers were kind of moved, like you know, like I guess pulled away. I so she had gotten. So the body was apparently reduced to ash. It was roughly three feet from her bed. Um, basically, like I said, everything was reduced to ash except her lower legs below the knee. She had three fingers that were intact, and then the front of her skull was intact. Jesus Christ. So uh, just keep that in mind, like how horrifying. And so but how would you explain And Because they, they looked through it. They went through the scene and back, everything. Back in those days, I would have said, witchcraft. No. And well, I think that during those days, but she was very pious. When, like, people were no, like, I'm saying someone cast witchcraft oh, on, on her. her. Yes. That makes sense. Is what I would accuse. Which I, I never really got. I think I remember in the in that pod, in Ashley's podcast that she went over and she was like, yeah, like I think that was something for the time, but it was never like definitively stated as some reason as to why she was dead. Yeah. But uh, they found a lamp that was tipped over near the body, but it was not, it was cold to the touch and also it was, um, didn't have any oil in it. Okay. So they were like, okay, well, that's weird. So that there's no, as far as they can see, no external kind of source of flame source that could have caught her. Yeah. And also, not a lot of stuff was on fire. Yeah, like it, it was just her. By the way, this light has been doing it. It can't, uh, Countess. I'm, this light is going on and yeah, off. Countess, we, uh, if you're here, I'm not speaking ill of the dead. I promise. Yeah, we have a uh, light attached to our fan in the studio. And one of the bulbs keeps blinking on and off <laughs> at random times. The Countess is like, I and, spontaneously uh, it's, combust. It's kind of cool, but kind of weird. Because it gets really dark and then really, really bright. It, it like, it's like it waits until we've forgotten about it and then comes back on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at all these mysterious things. By the way, I meant to tell you, I know this is an aside. Oh, no. I went home again and that light that still, I, okay. it's, it's on. it was off and the light was on. I, I didn't want to talk about it, but when I dog sat for you a few weeks ago, it did that to me. You have to tell me these things. I, I, <laughs> I noticed it. Literally the last day y'all were gone, when you and your mom were coming back in, I noticed... That that light had come on, I was like, "Oh hell to the no! Has, I am not listen, playing with you. I'm I, going home." Thomas, I have not. Thomas had put those crosses on the door. I have never gotten rid I, of. I them. need to go back through and redo it you and say some more it. prayers. You I really need to do. Redo it. But uh, but back, I guess back. Yes, to the back to our here. story. Uh, so the countess apparently. Like I said, very pious woman. They couldn't really explain as to why this had happened. Yeah, she to burst her. into flames, yeah. So I will fast forward a little bit. So there was uh, Larry Arnold, who I think, I believe this was, I couldn't get an exact date on that. It might actually, it might have been 95. I think I might address it a little bit later. But um, apparently, there have been 200 reports of spontaneous human combustion within the last 300 years, is what they said. So that's a lot of people, if you think about it. Yeah, but it's not at the same time. It's kind of like... Over, uh, yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty long gr- long list. So, I mean, I mean, not long list, but a long period of time. For not that many deaths. I mean, pe- there are so many people that die from other things before that, but... And, you know, it, it's so interesting to me because it's like... I, and this is where the list that you pulled up, uh, Rhonda, that I came with, um, it was... Let me see. The victims were chronic alcoholics, is what it said. Um, they were elderly females. Um, some lighted substance came into contact uh, with, uh, or sorry, it said, um, I think it was like without some, it, it was no was external. no external. Yeah, no external. Flame, yeah. Um, the hands and feet usually fall off. So they're never really I, like, you know, yeah. they're never really uh, t- burned or anything. And there's very little damage to other combustible things that are near the, near the body. So basically it's some random thing that just happens with no rhyme or reason yep which at the time too when you think about a time when maybe science was it was still people were scientists but they didn't have good explanations learning and we didn't have the technology but wasn't there a a death from this in 2010 yep there was and i'll go over that the most recent i said y'all i'll I'll tell them to look about up a little bit later i remember i'm gonna go into the south park thing very fast because it takes like three seconds but uh it, it was making fun of it because, of course, this is something that's like, okay, is it real? Is it not real? Is it somebody getting murdered? All this stuff. On the show, Kenny, who dies in every episode up until recent seasons, uh, he just spontaneously blew up in flames. Mm-hmm. And so they started freaking out. They started doing all this. And one of the dads, who is a ge- geologist, but for some reason does every other science in imaginable, discovers that the reason he spontaneously combusted was because he had a new girlfriend and didn't want to fart in front of her. <laughs> so Build because, up the gases. So it's because the reason people were exploding and bursting into flames was because they were in new relationships and didn't want to fart in front of each other. And then, uh, so they tried to fix it by everybody passing gas. 
and uh, that caused damage to the ozone layer. So they decided that there's just a right amount. You have to hold it in sometimes, but let it out sometimes. So it's like... Which is a real thing. If you look at it, cow farts are bad for the ozone. Yeah, they are. But it, it was just a funny aside to all this drama. So, but more, it's, more I mean, things. listen, you never know. I always attribute things. I'm like, there's probably some uh, truth in there somewhere. Oh, I'm sure there is to something. I'm sure, I'm sure this has to do with a combination of gases and uh, body fat content. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, if the body's producing a certain gas, mix it with all the alcoholic fumes that are wafting out of the pores. I could see it happening. Mm-hmm. If the body, if the body is basically, I've, I've had times where I've eaten something and gas is built up in me. And it's just uncomfortable, like heartburn kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine if you have such a horrible diet, mix it with alcohol, that's uh, extreme amounts of alcohol regularly, your body's got a lot of gas it's producing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just, it sounds like a dangerous combination, but it also sounds like you'd have to go to such an extreme uh, that you, uh, that to get to that point, that's almost impossible to get to. My thing is, is that... Um, you know, I, I don't think there will ever be a 100%, and I'll get into the scientific investigation that they did for it. I feel like everyone is, is different. You have to take it by patient by patient basis, kind of, you know, no yeah. one's ever going to be the same. So I'll, I'll kind of get into that scientific investigation. So there was an investigation that was performed by uh, Joe Nickel, um, who was a uh, scientific investigator and a forensic analyst named John Fisher. So they published this in the International Association of Arson Investigators. And so they looked at cases that spanned the 18th and 20th century, case, like any of those cases that yeah. kind of we were talking about. So I don't know. It, I think it would have included the Countess case that we just went over. Um, So apparently a lot of things were looked over to where the bodies were next to candles and lamps and fireplaces and, you know, things like that. They said that the victims weren't able to fully function upon the time of their death. So if they were alcoholics, maybe they were passed out. So they were so far inebriated that they were either passed out or they had no fine motor control. Yep. So no fine motor. And then I remember one of the cases um, that was covered, like the victim had taken two sleeping pills. So, you know, they were kind of inebriated. Um, They describe what is called the... um, wick effect which i had told y'all a little bit about this Mm -hmm. so it's like basically when the clothing of the victim soaks up any of the melted fat from the body as it's burning and they focus it's like a wick and then like as the fat uh kind of it kind of is melted the clothes absorb it and it burns for a lot longer which could have explained why the oil lamp was cold to the touch whenever they found uh the countess potentially yep i'm still disturbed so, but because if you think about it, if you have all this subcutaneous fat, which yeah, has a yeah. lot of stored energy, then you're going to burn for a long time. Yeah. And a lot of these bodies weren't found until like the next day or, you know. See, that to me just screams a foul play that somebody was involved. Mm-hmm. That, which that's they what, never, that's what yeah. would be my thought process is that someone was involved in this. This person was murdered. It would be my thought, but. There's no proof. There's no evidence. No. And some of the ones, too, they were like, well, maybe the, you know, I, I remember there was this case that, that they thought maybe the husband had done it. But they were like, well, you know, she didn't move and she she was already a drinker. She didn't try to get up, didn't try to run. Nothing else was burned. It's like, how would he have done that in such like everything had to fall in such a perfect array that it would have done it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that was the thing. So uh, fires also, apparently, according to this report, have a difficulty to burn laterally. So a lot of them burn up, which might yeah. explain why the surrounding objects were ri- relatively unaffected. So if it burned up, then it would be it would start in the stomach then because that's where everything's cut off is the legs, right? Or like I think they're saying like generally oh. like up from the body, gotcha. not going So it would have like gone lateral. to the roof or to the up the wall. Yeah, which thing. some of the roofs like yeah. ab- above them were kind of burned, I think, a little bit, yeah. but not a lot of them. So it's kind of like a camp. I think they attributed it to kind of a similar to how you can stand near a burning campfire and mm-hmm. not get burned. And yeah. then also like I, some of the logs on the outside of a campfire might not be as burned as the logs inside the middle of the yeah, campfire. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. So that's kind of like what they were talking about. So there's um, other possible explanations as well. So um, like we said, the people who were more elderly, they might have had decreased mobility. Maybe something happened to where either they had had a heart attack and fallen or they did they couldn't move as well as like a younger person would have done and so they just kind of were confined to one location um a lot of them like the cigarettes if the cigarettes were like if they ever had a cigarette and they burned themselves and then caught a flame or caught fire maybe it just burned away 
And like maybe, you know, there was no, which I didn't know. I was like, I didn't know if the filter, like Rhonda, do you know if any like of the filters of cigarettes will burn? I'm assuming everything will burn like once it if, burns once for a while. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not a smoker. I've never been a smoker. I would have no idea. But not to, ch I'm not really changing the subject here, but I've been reading about this while you're talking. And here's a couple of explanations that come from the early 1900s, 1921 in okay. particular for this. Lines of earth force that run across the globe. Ooh. Ley lines. Ley lines. Yeah, you're right, Thomas. Ley lines. Talking about how it could be caused by, let me find this exactly. Uh, yes, some, some supernatural force that comes from these ley lines of ancient power flowing along the actual line in the earth itself that Ooh. causes this. And also, here's another one, and we're not surprised, is somehow it's tied to UFOs. I, I agree. I don't agree with the UFOs. I could maybe see. I could maybe get behind the supernaturalness of ley lines, because there's so many different energy forces on our planet and on all of us that I could see it if there's some other force that we haven't identified yet traveling around the planet, keeping things in, keeping the planet. I guess it would be in homeostasis, yeah, in equilibrium. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we just don't understand it. And maybe some of them get crossed somehow, mix it with the right situation, the right. Um, climate basically yeah with the human body being in certain states you get that energy introduced and you get energy fuel oxygen those things are what's necessary to start a fire you get that together and spontaneous combustion which i'm telling you i was like it just makes me a little bit more uh enjoy your life while you have it <laughs> For yeah real. no kidding so also another one was like we said the wick effect it's just saying that um uh, maybe and it could explain as to why the hands and the feet weren't burned as badly. Because no clothes were covering them. Well, that and also you consolidate a lot of your fat in, in your, your upper, abdomen. Yeah, and like a lot of your fat, you don't have a lot of fat in your head or like you in your arm. Like you can, but it's not as much as like usually your it'll be in your chest and your stomach. Which could explain why as to like their knees and their legs maybe and why her the front of her skull was remaining. Yeah, which because she doesn't have a lot of fat there. Yeah, so gotcha. um, so it kind of lost its ability. Like there wasn't as much to burn. Gotcha. Um, so also ketosis, uh, which can be caused by like, you know, a low carb diet or something. I yeah. remember uh, you just it produces ketones, uh, ketone products or acetone, which is very flammable. That could help. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, which also acetone, if y'all don't know, is like nail polish remover, or like stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So we have a way of producing that in the body. Um, Larry Arnold in his 1995 book, Ablaze. I was like, oh, oh no. ap aptly named. Um, human body might be flammability might be increased by alcohol consumption, which we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Saying that it might be like function as like your big Molotov cocktail type of thing. Yeah. Um, and even ball lightning. We had talked. Oh, speak. I said ball lightning, and then that light went off. Yeah, that's weird. So it says even ball lightning could lead to it. Like a and ball lightning. Y'all can kind of explain what it was. Y'all have seen it. I when I saw it, I was a very little kid. So yeah, we saw. We were actually. Uh, I was actually driving through Texas. Uh, and uh, on the interstate, and we had a, going through a thunderstorm, and this lightning was just everywhere, and this streak just came down out of the sky, hit the ground beside of the interstate, and it was blue, a long blue streak, and it Ooh. ended in a ball. It looked like it was maybe, if I had to put a... A guesstimate on the size, maybe the size of uh, soccer ball, maybe. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. And it was blue. But that, yeah, that's exactly what it was. A long streak with the the ball at the end of it. So I couldn't really find as to why, like, you know, it was another person that said it. I get, didn't get his name on here. But um, I was like, well, I said, maybe, it, you know, it's just saying that something like that could have hit a person and set them aflame. I'm not sure. But it's like, I guess it's a lot slower moving and well, stuff like that. Apparently, it uh, it isn't just thunderstorms that cause it. So I, it, I don't see, I hadn't do any research for ball lightning. But it's possible that it, what causes lightning is friction. Yeah. It's friction in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So what possibly could happen with ball lightning is something, again, we're talking about friction, some situation where the climate is perfectly right causes it to spark inside somewhere and yeah. shoot that lightning. And as you said, it is slower. That's why you see the – it's not an instantaneous flash like when we see regular lightning. Yeah. Ball lightning lasts for a little while. So when it happens, it's possible, I would I would guess. And again, this is all opinions. This is all nothing confirmed. Yeah. But I would assume if you have the right static, the right humidity, the right pressure, everything set right, you could cause lightning to happen in a room. Mm -hmm. So if that happens and there's something for it to hit, it lightning goes to a source. That's why lightning goes to ground. Mm -hmm. 
it goes to the nearest source. So if you have a metal rod in the ground and a human standing by it, it's going to hit the metal rod. Mm-hmm. But it's going to look for outlets. So if there's no other outlet, it's going to hit the nearest one that works for what it needs. And if it's a high water concentration, it's going to go for a human body. Yep. Which, high water or high metal is yep. what it's going to go for. And, uh, you know, that was – so that was basically some of the, the scientific investigations that they found. Um, a lot of the things – I mean, I'll leave it up to you to kind of interpret too. But I will say, like we were talking about, the most recent case was in 2010, which the coroner listed it as spontaneous human combustion. But kind of reading into it, I kind of looked at some of the aspects of the case, and I was like, you know, I, it doesn't really sound – like, like spontaneous. Well, I mean, granted, I think that they're along the lines of there was no traces of accelerant. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, there was they couldn't find a cigarette or anything like that. You know, the things I guess you would commonly think would cause it. Yeah. Like I could see grandma smoking a cigarette, falling asleep and catching her clothes on fire. Yeah. That kind of thing. Something but, like that. But it was yeah. actually a Michael Faraday who was in. Um, Let me see. It's west of Ireland. It, 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 it says west of Ireland. That's like what the name of it is. It says uh, Clearview Park uh, in Ballyborn, uh, Galway, west of Ireland. We've been there. Yeah. Y'all been there? Yeah. All yeah. right. Maybe y'all were around the same time. What year did y'all go? 2014. Oh, so a little bit after him. Yeah. So um, so it was on December 22nd, 2010. Apparently, uh, Michael's neighbor, Michael Faraday's neighbor, was awakened by a fire alarm, saw that there was just b- copious amounts of smoke coming out of his place. They ended up going in, and um, the only damage, apparently, was it was confined to the body. It was just, uh, that uh, was it. What? So, so there was, was like no damage to the bed, no damage to any chairs, no damage maybe, to the floor. Maybe some of the surrounding carpet and stuff, yeah. but it stopped. Wow. Like okay. it, it was barely like it, it, it was like confined to one room, not a ton of damage. I think in that room. That is weird. So they uh, only damage was to the body, but there was uh, th- but it was near an open fireplace. Okay. Apparently, so but I didn't get anything in the report that said oh there were logs in the fire or accelerant near there because they apparently they did not find any trace of accelerant. Yeah, well you don't have to use an accelerant to start a fire, but uh, yeah, if they didn't say anything about the fire being recently lit. No heat from it. No source of recent ash. It's unlikely that it was the fireplace. It was something else. Well, and what they said, too, in a post-mortem autopsy, they determined that he had type 2 diabetes and hypertension, but there okay. were such extensive burns that there was never any, like, they could not find a definitive cause. So, which is probably why they had to uh, use the uh, spontaneous... Because there's nothing else they could accuse it of being? So, yeah. and that was, and I was going to relate this back to the Countess. I was like, you know, we said that she was dull and heavy. Or, you know, more lethargic, went to bed, didn't feel good. Woke up, maybe she was having like a heart attack or something. Knocked over the lamp, which maybe would have had oil in it then, maybe lit. Uh, Fell on her, started, you know, she died there. You know, I was thinking maybe it was something along those lines. Like Something that just could have been avoided if they had had more clarity of thought. Yeah, well, also too, like, you know, um, at that time, I I don't really know if they would have had a term for heart attack or anything like that, you know. Um, like maybe they'd be like, oh, well, she's a witch. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, wow. When there doubt. you go okay. back to that theory. I know again. when in doubt. So, I mean, I guess yeah. there is always witchcraft, but that's about all I have. I was like, you just be the, um, be what you think it is. I suppose like whatever you think. Yeah. Well, with that, we'll wrap it up and catch you guys next time. Please comment on our Instagram, on our Twitter, anything, just send us something or, uh, at the very least, please share with your friends, guys. Yeah. We've got, uh, well, it's summer break, so go ahead and share with your friends. Uh, if they're out of school, need something to do before they go hang out with somebody, they can listen to us. No, listen to us before you go somewhere. We're like 30 yeah. minutes or long. on your oh, drive. Hey, yeah, on your drive. Download yeah, and listen. If you're going to the beach, listen to us on your way to the beach. I know everybody likes to listen to tunes, but sometimes you just want to hear something podcast. different. I love it. You know, yeah. I had, a, I told y'all this. I said, uh, my friends, uh, some work friends, they were listening to us on the way down when I went on my vape trip. Uh, you did not tell me that. I That's did not tell cool. you. They were, I, I had told them about it. They were like, oh, we'll listen. And they sent me a Snapchat or whatever of them listening to it. <laughs> That's awesome. But all right, guys. Yes, please share. Please let everybody know. Tell all your friends about us and they might like us. Stop, drop, and roll. And we're going to try and do more. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. I, that just blew my mind. Uh, That's good advice. You can't even. Yeah. It, it is. Okay. It is, yeah. but okay. uh, probably time to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to try and do more episodes like this. We're still going to do our history episodes, but we're going to add in some mystery episodes. We're going to add in some conspiracy episodes, things that don't really have an explanation yet. I love it. So check it out. We'll let We'll keep you guys informed.
So catch you next time. All right. Until later. All right. Bye, guys.